the Lord do terrible things to me if I allow anything but death to separate us. Mm -hmm. And then she said, and, and when Naomi saw who had made up her mind, and she could not be persuaded otherwise, <coughs> she just stopped urging her. When Naomi and Ruth arrived in Bethlehem, it was the beginning of the barley season. How perfect God makes it, they arrive at the time that they are harvesting the barley. Mm -hmm. And as we look at this lesson here, uh, first let's take a look at Naomi. Now, her, the, 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 her first hard decision was to decide to go back to Bethlehem. And she heard that, you know, the family was over there, it had, it had died down, so they were getting food again. The rain was up, they was getting rain and all that. So she, um, that was a hard decision for her to go back because they left there because of that. Mm -hmm. And she heard that God had visited his people and given them bread and, 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 and stuff. In other words, the family had been lifted. The rain had returned. So that was her first hard decision. I think we'll go back to go back to Bethlehem. After all, that's where her people were. Mm -hmm. And she said uh -uh, to Naomi, you know, the place Boaz, where they went, it, it represented them. And she didn't want to stay there anymore. She suffered too many hardships in Moab to continue to life there. And then her second hard choice was to tell her daughters, daughters in law and leaving them, and they too must leave and return to their home. They, they were remnants of what had been a great marriage, a great family. And as the, the, as the women hugged each other, they cried like it was another funeral all over again. <laughs> they had grown up so close to their family until the death had destroyed. <laughs> what, about, like, what about their future? And as you look at uh, Oprah here, Oprah, <clears throat> and she was, Naomi kept telling, you need to go back, you need to go back to your people and, and your God and all. So she finally made up her mind. And I can imagine probably some things that went on in Oprah's mind was like, well, she said, my mother-in-law said, she believed what Naomi, they learned to, they was able to trust Naomi's word because she was true and she was good to her the daughters-in-law. Mm -hmm. And so they respected her highly. Right. And they respected the God that she served. Mm -hmm. And so I can imagine Arthur saying probably, well, if my mother-in-law said I should go back, maybe, just maybe I should. And I can imagine she may have got thinking that, you know, if I go to Bethlehem, I'm a foreigner. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody there but my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. If she should die when I get there, I'm in trouble. Because nobody knows me and I don't know anybody else. Mm -hmm. And she probably said to herself, oh, you know, I don't, it'll be a long time before I find another husband if I go to Bethlehem. But if I go back to my country where my people are, they know me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they know the religion that had. Now, they, uh, the country of Moab, they practice uh, pagan worship. Their, their god that they worship was called Chemosh, mm -hmm. and he was he was a rough god. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, they, there they sacrificed children, mm -hmm. and uh, Chemosh was a a tough god. He was probably one of the worst. Mm -hmm. So she's, I mean, all of that she knew about that. Well, uh, Orpha said, "Well, I guess I just have to go back, bite the bullet, and go back." So she went back, but then Ruth. And you can't blame Orpah because she did what she thought was best. Right. After Naomi told her she should go back, and Naomi thought she could persuade both of them to go back. Mm -hmm. But Ruth had already made up her mind. Mm -hmm. I ain't going nowhere. That's right. Ruth was saying, I'm going where you go. That's right. And so uh, <clears throat> that was that was one of the big differences. Uh, 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 Orpah is not to be really blamed for her, her decision, and Ruth not blamed for hers. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, you know it had to be in the blame. Mm -hmm. Do none of this would have transpired anyway. That's right. But she said, uh -uh. Orpah said, uh, you know, I, if I go there, I might be helpless. 
So she said, I'm going back to my people. Well, Ruth, she didn't want to go back to her people. She mm -hmm. knew about um, Naomi's God. She watched how Naomi conducted herself. Mm -hmm. Naomi was good even outside of church, you know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like she waited until she got to church and she did this great performance. Right. But Naomi was good to them, and she prayed and, and taught them things about her, the living God, even around the house. Right. So they had great respect for her. And, uh, <clears throat> but um, Ruth decided to go with her to Bethlehem. And you, you know, you look at Ruth, she was determined to stay with mm -hmm. Naomi and take her chances. Even wanted to be buried where, Na where Naomi would be buried. Mm -hmm. she, was dis she was disconnecting herself from her old way of life. She was assuming a different identity. She did, she did not want to go back to where she came from. And uh, she chose, and you know, when she said she chose, she wanted to be buried where Naomi would be buried. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, many times people, when they come from different places, and they, when they, when they come, when they come, they want to be taken back to their home country, their homeland, mm -hmm. or their home state, and buried there with the family. Mm -hmm. And this is the way, you know, when we grew up, our people that lived in the north, New York, Washington, and places, when they died, when we were young, they were brought back here. Mm -hmm. But now, if someone died, you better get your van or something if you want to go to be a part of the funeral. Because right. they don't bring them home anymore. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't bring them home anymore. You have to get a ride and go up there if you want to be part of that funeral. Right. Mm -hmm. But in the old days, they, they didn't. They, they brought them back here. So, that, that's one of the things about uh, <clears throat> about Ruth. She wanted to be buried where their mama was going to be buried. In other words, she had changed her identity. She was cutting ties. She had disconnected with, from all her... Um, she had disconnected herself from all her past, and she didn't want to even think about it. She said, no, you know, she turned it around. I, I'm not going back. And so... As I said, she said she didn't even want to go back to be buried in her hometown. So she really had it that she was going to be with Naomi until. But you know, she didn't. She didn't worry about a past. She didn't want to even be connected with a past. And most times we kind of like you know, it's like this ancestral stuff. Sometimes we don't know where we came from, know who our people were. It, apparently, it didn't bother her. She just disregarded. But uh, her lifestyle revealed that the, revealed the living God. She had the presence and the love of God in her private life. See, when they saw how Naomi acted outside the church, around the house, or whatever, then, you know, they couldn't help but love. They looked up to it. And, you know, and can the same be said for us? Do we conduct ourselves out of the church mm -hmm. so our lives would be a testimony of how to win and save those who are outside of the ark of salvation? Mm -hmm. do, we, do we do like those did? Mm -hmm. we like their own? And, and you know, the reason, if you think about it, the reason they left Bethlehem was because of a family. Mm -hmm. And Bethlehem means house of bread. So why would they place the house of bread into a food? Why didn't they have food? And, and Leviticus has talked about the fact that God, that rain for crops was based on the people obedience to God. And so therefore, God had held the rain. And that's why they had a famine. But the place was called the house of bread. But at that time, there was no way. And, and, and the biblical say that uh, if you, he said, if you keep my commandments, if you in, if you keep my command, my statutes, and my commandments, and all, and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. Now. If you look at it, uh, Ruth, you know, Ruth was in, had faith and determination. She spiritually saw things were going to get better. 
she knew if she went, she loved Naomi regardless. And she said, you know, even if things didn't get any better, she was still going to be with Naomi because that's where she wanted to be. She made up her mind to leave her country, her people, and I guess and what family she had left, leave them behind because she was on her going to uh, be with Naomi. And many times, I think a lot of us, I know I would have been a little bit leery of leaving everything I knew, everybody I knew, and go to a strange, uh, strange land. You have nobody you know. You can't ask for help because you don't know anybody. They don't know you. So you both are skeptical of each other. So I'm saying, Ruth, Ruth had to have faith. I don't know if my faith could have been that strong. No, I'm saying right or wrong, I don't know. Because you telling me to get up, like today, you tell me to get up, leave, and go to California. I don't know anybody in California. And, and I doubt if I get any help from anybody in California. Let me stay in North Carolina. I know a whole bunch of people here. <laughs> I know a whole bunch of people. Like this whole this church family. I got a, one brother there. I uh, got a few cousins and stuff like that. But somebody to know me and somebody to help me. But if I just took up today and went to California, I don't know what, I, I just couldn't do it. You know, it would have to be God telling me. And God's going to have to work on me before he tells me. I mean, I'm just saying how it is. He's telling the truth, right? I mean, if just think today, if one of you had to get up and move to New, even to New York, what would you do? You don't know anybody up there. Even if you went up there with a relative, that relative died, you see, you had a loss. You don't know what to do. So I admire Ruth. I'm not criticizing Orville because she did, or Naomi preached to both of her about leaving and going back to the family. Mm -hmm. But, and perhaps she started feeling like, you know, I better go where I know somebody. And so she went back home. Then Ruth said, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm leaving for good. I'm just connecting. And, and that, you know, that, that was her way of doing things. But you just wonder sometimes, you know, you look at these people in the Bible now, Ruth will leave. And she probably never went back to where, to her homeland. After she, as we read on later on, we know that she came up from Naomi and they got, she ended up getting married and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But you know, um, when all this happened, Naomi first lost her husband and he had left Bethlehem, went to Moab because of, you know, there wasn't any work to do. There was a family. There was no crops together or nothing. So they went there. Because he said if he stayed there, they were going to die of starvation. Mm -hmm. He went there, and he still died. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we plan, God knows. Mm -hmm. But uh, Naomi, <clears throat> and after he died, that was a big blow to her, because that was the one who would look out for her and everything. Mm -hmm. But after he passed away, then she only had the, the two sons, and at that time, just the two sons. And she was uh, she was depending on them. Because in those days, if a, a person, you know, their husband and their sons looked out for them, and they didn't have to worry about where they're going to get food from or anything like that. Because they were looked after by the males in the family. Mm -hmm. But all of Naomi's males were gone. And it must have been a devastating blow to them because here she was, come there, they had, they had anchored down there, been there a few years, and then this happens. And then the next thing she knows, both of the sons died. That had to be very devastating to them. So, but the children, you know, they clung together. The three women clung together. They stayed with Naomi. Naomi says, she told them, when she told them to leave and go back to their country, she said, um, you know, said, I'm too old for another husband. And says, when I did the research, it says she even thought to about Sarah. But she said, I won't be like Sarah. I won't be that like Sarah got, got fortunate. And she said, I won't be like that. But she said, I want y'all to go back to your country and enjoy your people. And she said, um, Naomi said, no, where you go, I'm going. 
that night, and she was very faithful to her mother-in-law, and I thought, you know, <coughs> they were very good. Uh -huh. And they were a good family unit, and you know, when the family is, when God is in the house, when God is in the presence, the family act right. Uh -huh. and, and they respect and love each other. Uh -huh. They look out for each other. So, that's the way they looked at to Naomi. <clears throat> so, Ruth had, Ruth had faith, and she had determination. She spiritually saw, she saw the roses in her thorn instead of the thorns in her roses. Because Ruth come from a pagan country, and then when she had been enlightened by Naomi's God, which was just great. And so, she said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I had thorns. But but I got a few roses in there. Naomi says, I came from, I had a family, a loving family. I had roses, but now I got some thorns in there. But you can either thank God for the roses in your uh, thorn, or you can be upset over the thorns in your roses. <clears throat> but, you know, because what lies ahead of us, and what lies behind us is a small matter compared to what lies within us. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you this morning. Thank God for you being that awful message, which you don't say it at all. But uh, like you said, we love her mother-in-law, man. I mean, she said, well, you love our love, and your people gonna be my people, and my God, your God mm -hmm. gonna be my God. Mm -hmm. She was dedicated. Yep. You know, it also shows <coughs> Ruth teaches us how to go out on faith. Yes, uh-huh. She had, she had a lot of faith. <laughs> and you know, if we were uh, dedicated to God, as Ruth, uh, as Ruth was in Naomi, can you imagine what we could do? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. We sing that song a lot about uh, where he leads me, I will call. Mm -hmm. And we say, you know, I will trust in the Lord until I die. But do we, can we really serve him? Do we know how to serve him? Do we really want to know how to serve God? And if we're dedicated two thirds like Ruth was, we could, we could do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And Ruth's faith was strong. She wasn't weak at all. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we get weak, but we get up and we keep going. Because mm -hmm. we know we're going to get weak. We get up and we keep going. But the thing about it is, <clears throat> we are all at different levels in our <coughs> spiritual life, just like we're at different levels in a lot of things. But the thing about it is, if we know God, and if we trust God, see, in order for and walk with God, but in order for us to walk with God, we got first talk with God. Right. We got to study the Word and, and, and learn and talk with God, and then you can walk with God. And when you start walking with God, you know, you're on your way. Because you're going to stumble, you're going to fall. Sometimes you're going to fall on the way. But get back on. Get back on and go again. But the thing about it is, we need this faith like we had to, to, to follow God. Amen. Are there any other comments? This concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. I was uh, listening as she was talking, and typically we were talking about uh, going to California. <coughs> I don't know anybody in California, but uh, you know, God would have to really move to get to California. I think about uh, you know our children's uh, first day of school. They have never, they have never been to school before. They've never.
never been been outside or some have never been outside at home in a setting like that. And they say they prepare to get on the bus, they have tears in their eyes, or they drop them off at school, they have tears. They want to go back, they want to go back to home. I mean, I want to go with me, I want to go with you, they want to go back to the comfort setting. And that's the way we are. We we want to be in that comfortable setting. But whenever God whenever God leaves us and guides us, you know, as long as we know, we have to know that we're walking and talking with God. And if that's what God has for us to do, we know that there's a blessing where God sends us. Yes, we have to learn and get to that point where we can trust God. I think, though, that also could apply to adults, I mean, starting a new job. Yes. You know, sometimes that could be something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whether well, it's a ladder or sometimes, sometimes there's a department over there that I've been wanting to try that department. I've been, been afraid to go over there. And he, he, you're, you're right. There's so many things that we, we face with. And when, God, when God's moving us, and, but we have to, we have to know that if we're walking with God, if we're talking with God, if He's with us, that everything is going to be all right. We don't do it, don't do it because we see somebody else doing it. Do it because that's what God has called us to do. And then once God calls you, you determine God has called you to do a certain thing. You got to remember the road going to be rough sometimes. You're going to quit. You you don't want to, you don't want to do it no more. You want to just just disconnect like a roof, but then you got a job to do. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you feel. Sometimes you got to get up and come out. Like I said, this morning was a nice sweeper morning too. Amen. I mean, how many want to get up this morning and come out? Y'all are some good ones that you want to get up and come out. But we have to. We are committed, and we we committed to God's work. That's right. And we are we are, we know the time ain't long now. We can't stop now. Can't slow down. We just got to keep right on keeping on. We got to walk through the through the valley sometimes. We just keep on going. Go when we feel like it. Go when we don't feel like it. That's right. It, it, it's it's hard now. It is. <laughs> there are some days that are really hard. It's like who wants to get up? Who wants to get up and go to church this morning? Nobody really wanted to, but we wanted to be with God. We want to worship in the house of God, and we know we owe God that. Amen. Amen. So all the, the time for us to pay him is now while we can. Because when we come in there, we won't be able to. That's right. And then we can say, may, may the work we've done speak for us. That's right. And you got to stay focused, you know, because a lot of times with myself, in the past, I don't let it bother me now, but you know, when you're out doing things and, and certain folk don't appreciate it, and you kind of focus on, well, I want to quit, but see, it ain't about them. Mm -hmm. It's about you and him. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep going and, and stay focused, but it will get you. Cause uh, uh, my thing is, it's sad that you can't say for us all of us in this room, if, if somebody in here I know is ungrateful, well, it's sad that they gonna benefit anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Everybody gonna benefit whether they like you or not. So you can't focus on that. Just focus on the main thing. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get to the point where it doesn't matter what people say about you or what they think about you, it doesn't bother you anymore. You know you're growing. Cause most of us, you know, <laughs> we want if somebody to come up and make you mad. You ready to kill them? <laughs> you know, you, if things like that come up, but when you let them talk, you let them say what they want to say to you. They can treat you like they want to treat you, but when they're mistreating you, they're mistreating God. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you stay with God because He gonna protect you. That's right. And they gonna pay. You know, for these they so their seeds are coming up again. Mm -hmm. They gonna pay. Sometimes it looks like some of the worst people fare the best, mm -hmm. and some of the best people fare the worst. But we don't know what God got in mind. That's right. Because sometimes, even though we're the victims, sometimes 
God has to work on us sometimes and get our attitude straightened out. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Because sometimes we ain't always like we're supposed to be. Exactly right. But you know, I always say that, um, you know, I get mad when people don't talk about me. It make me think I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> so it, it motivates me to do, to do more. Right. And that's why a lot of times I try to make people mad. Because I know they're going to do something. Usually they ain't going to do nothing, they're going to do something. And most of the time people get mad, they're going to do something. Yeah, they're going to stop working for mm -hmm. And then to his name, because Christ said, what you do to my little one, you also do it to me. Okay, fine, tomorrow, next day I'll try to do better. And just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mindful of that, too, when we think about, you know, we want to come on first Sunday because we don't want to come on third Sunday because somebody, some woman, a boy, girl, or somebody else that gives a child a word, we don't want to come. But, uh, you know, when Isaiah says, it doesn't matter who's bringing the word. Mm. You need to come in here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it, right. it doesn't say exactly like that. But uh, it doesn't matter who's giving the word. It may be one of the children's time to give the word. Mm -hmm. And if it is, if it's past the turn, he knows that. And so instead of us getting up and walking out because we come, there's a woman preaching, there's a child speaking, that's not, that shouldn't be. And the more we grow, we realize that. If a rock can cry out, mm -hmm. certainly a child can, mm -hmm. or a woman can, or mm -hmm. Or deacon can, mm -hmm. or you, or me, or anyone else, when it's God's time. And when it's God has ordained that for you to do, it'll be known. Those people that need to hear that word will stay and hear that word. But what I'm trying to say is we need to be mindful of that. We want to hear certain people will come on certain days and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you're a child of it just God, it won't, it won't work, children. It won't work. <laughs> if you're a child of God, even God's the who doing it. You, it, you will come. Because people say, uh, I went and put Paul in prison, and the people, some of the people say, well, what's Paul going to do now? He can't preach. He, he can't preach no. And then some of the other people went to preach because they want to get the same praise that uh, Paul had. Yeah. And Paul said, it don't matter. It don't matter who's preaching. Love the gospel is then you going to preach. Amen. And that's, that's really all that matters. If you know, if some of you uh, can bring your words up, I listen to. If I know how to bring the word, I bring the word. It, you know, it don't matter. I don't have time for playtime no more. I just want to go on. I just want to move on in the name of the Lord. And then it's his name like if you was a preacher and you getting up there and you teaching us the wrong document. I'm saying him listen at you and you know it's not right. Then that's not gonna affect me. It's gonna affect you. It'll affect me in a way, cause I'm thinking you right, but you wrong. But you gonna have to suffer for that consequence. Oh yes, uh huh. I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. And so, you know, once we, we have to start. Like I said, first of all, we start talking to God, reading the Word, y'all talking to God. Then we start walking with God. And sooner or later, you know, we get strong in the Lord. Where the Lord of this mess don't fall. And you know, everything is so temporary here. Why worry about it? Hmm. It ain't worth it. <laughs> everything is temporary, including us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So why do we need to worry about all this stuff going on here and this, that? Why do we need to hold grudges 25 years like they had to use in the McCord? I mean, we got to let this mess go. Uh, that's one thing about getting old, so you can't hold no grudge for 20 because you don't remember what happened. <laughs> There's nowhere in the world I can hold it. I don't know if I can hold a grudge for 10 years. <laughs> but you know, the leaning tree is not always the first to fall. Right. So just because leaning it don't mean I'm ready to fall. <laughs> Are there any other comments? Thank you. Thank God. Thank God for that awesome lesson he told. Mm -hmm. Good preacher. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to thank us, uh, yeah. this morning for coming to listen and uh, uh, you just want to read the church if somebody responds to the lesson this morning. All we have to do is learn to follow God and do His will. 
keep his commandments. And we can't go wrong. today comes from Ruth 1, 6 through 18, 22. The subject of the lesson, changing identity. The main thought, Ruth 1, 16. The teacher took charge of their classes for 34 minutes. The total attendance was 32. Total offering was $46.50. The weather was warm. Closing remarks were made by Mother Dupree and Trustee Williams. All your officers remain the same. Thank you for, for the reading of the minutes this morning. Are there any correction of the minutes this morning? If not, we'll receive the minutes that have been read this morning. We're going to just stand and close out with the word. 